Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to show you from Diamond the HD5850. This one is one of the latest ATI Radeon video cards on the market. The Viper series from Diamond has a whole range of 5800 cards. This one is the 5850 that comes with 1 gig of GDDR5 memory and is clocked at a default 725 megahertz core clock and the memory is of course 1 gigahertz. Effectively that's 4 gigahertz total. Now, looking here at the features, like I said, GDDR5, it's using the 40 nanometer process. That's the technology, the architecture of the die and the size. So we're going to use less heat. It's going to dissipate less heat, use less energy. That's terrific. And of course, it's DirectX 11 compliant. Everybody's ready for that. As you can see here, the card itself is quite large, but not as large as the 5870. It does have the connectors, the two six pin PCI Express connectors at the back, unlike the 5870, which has it at the top. Many cards do have them at the top instead. The traditional 92 millimeter uh, blower style fan is going to uh, push the air out through these vents that you can see here at the back, these tiny little vents here at the, on the back of the card. And of course at the top, there's also some, some vents there as well, okay? It has all the support that you would expect from ATI, as well as two DVI outs, one HDMI, and also the new display port there. So you can actually have three monitors plugged in to have basically a surround 3D viewing of what you're playing, for example. So this is terrific. Two DVI monitors plugged in and one display port out, and then you have three monitors plugged in. Okay, here's the card itself installed. As you can see, there's some room at the back. I mentioned this in my previous videos on this card that it's 9.5 inches in length but you should have a little bit more room so 10.5 inches total because at the at the end you've got to install the uh, the power right the power connector so you do need at least another inch there at the back so keep it in mind if you've got at least 10.5 inches no problem you can install this in your case just like the 4890 now here is the uh, back of the card nothing special that's traditional the view and the uh, top of the case has ATI Radeon written on the on the uh, plastic case there. And if we were to open this up, actually, you would see the uh, cooler, the copper heatsink, the cooler there. The, um, the heatsink itself is attached, obviously, to the uh, GPU, and that's what it looks like, okay, just for your information. So that's the card in itself. Now, uh, with this card, of course, how does this stack up to the 5870, the 4890? Well, let's take a look at this chart, and you can see here that obviously it beats the 4890 and the 4870 in all specs, except for the core clock. But we can overclock this uh, 5850 because of the wattage. It actually uses 151 watts, which is pretty close to the 4870. So obviously, this card is going to be cooler. We're going to be able to overclock it better than a 4890 or the 40. Um, 870 even so let's try it out and see how it does as you can see here is a 4890 side by side so you can see the length is identical okay so if you can install a 4890 in your system you can install the 5850 no problem here's the uh, minimum requirements that you need 450 watt power supply for one of these uh, cards a 600 watt power supply with uh, the two six pin connectors would be great for two cards in crossfire Here's the system that I'm using today, my test system. I've reviewed each of these components separately, so you can watch my other videos if you're interested in these guys. And uh, when installing the card, again, I thought I'd install the 4890 side by side so you can see it. Okay, I want you to be convinced that you can install the 5850. Many people ask me, will it fit in my case? Well, I'm using the uh, Cooler Master um, Scout case, as you can see here, and I've got plenty of room there for it. Now, in uh, Windows 7 Ultimate that I'm running here, you can see I'm running uh, the GPU-Z and I've got all the stats. There's the 40 nanometer architecture, the die size, the transistors. All the numbers are there for you for your reference. DirectX support, of course, 11, shader model 5, and all the other specs that you would want to know and compare with other um, GPUs. Okay, I'm using the latest Catalyst drivers, 9.10, and there's the default clock speeds for your reference, okay? Now my next video, my part two, I will be overclocking and benchmarking this, okay? Now GPU temperature, idle 30 degrees Celsius, that's about 27 watts roughly, and uh, full load temperature 55 degrees Celsius. So this is an awesome card when it comes to temperature readings. As you can see here, it's priced at less than $300, okay? The 5870 would be another $100 more, okay? Now if we looked at the uh, box itself, what comes in it, you've got the traditional driver CD, of course, and the uh, manual, okay, so you have that, as well as a Crossfire Bridge Connector in case you're um, ready to buy another card and you want to have two of these side by side. 
And of course, if you're using an older monitor, you've got the G, uh, the, the VGA out there, the DVI to VGA connector. So no problem there, you're covered in case you've got an older monitor. Okay, so this is a terrific card so far. Specs are great. You can see that the temperature readings are terrific. Let's do a benchmarking now. Please watch part two of this video review. And I'd like to thank Diamond for providing it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.